Hey everyone, Psychotronic Squirt Gun here. This is the back to back issue area. I got about like five. So, but I keep ordering stuff, you know. And uh, yeah, let's do this. See if I could set it up without turning it off. Do you think that'll happen? All right. Let's see if that works. I think it's going to work. This issue. <laughs> This episode of uh, Comic Book Hall is brought to you by the demon smashing out of a, a computer screen to choke out some corrupt person, perhaps him fighting with the American flag, but getting his head blown off and the black cat almost dying. When I was a kid, that was, well, that probably is the first spectacular Spider-Man comic I ever read, and it was gripping for me. Now you know why Spidey is so ingrained in my brain. Without further ado, let's get into this. 1978, DC's Comics, DC's Challengers of the Unknown, 86, with your guy Deadman, really cool, Swamp Thing, and the Challengers, right? Um, slowly collecting Challengers. I will read this stuff. But it's looking pretty good. I just like the uh, the title, Challengers of the Unknown. That's pretty, pretty good. Pretty BA, I guess, huh? As one would say. Pretty cool. 1983. Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man. 83. Uh, this is credited as the Punisher's origin. Um, it's in super high grade. I didn't pay that much for it. I don't know if it's true. I've read this. I know the story. Um, but I don't... Remember if it's the first time they mentioned his family dying and him wanting to reap justice and vengeance upon all criminals. Love my Bill Mantlo as a writer. So, yeah, you got your black cat in here, which is cool. That's when she was really cool, you guys. Now she's just however she's written, right? There we go. Pretty cool cover. Okay, 1990 by Air Cell, later Air Cell, Vampire's Kiss. It's Adult Horror by Brian Blair. And I got that from a cheap comic collector for two bucks. Pretty cool. Blood and Guts in the back. Beautiful uh, lady in the back. And we'll keep it is adult. We'll keep it family friendly here. But yeah, I see air cell in the cheap. I just grab it. This looks pretty good. This is uh, not his earlier work, but Brian Blair. But it's it's cool. I like the inks. Nineteen eighty six New Mutants forty three was checking to see if it was Bill Sinkevich, but I don't think it might be the uh maybe the cover is I don't know, but there's a guest penciler in here. Steve Purcell. Nice high grade copy for you. Pretty cool. 1985, John Sable Freelance, number 20, by First Comics. Pretty cool. Cool Mike Grill cover. Is that a raven? Or a blackbird? I got so much of this, of this stuff, but... Um, I think that people should uh, 
be very aware of Mike Grill and what he did in the 80s. So if you see this in the in the um, cheap bins, just grab them. So worth it. The art's so worth it. You got time beavers in the back. So expect to see John Sable popping up in these halls too. Okay, 1982. Doctor Strange, 51. I collect Doctor Strange currently, and so does Easy Comic Reader. Just saw that Swagda got a bunch of uh, Doctor Strange a couple weeks ago or a week ago from Easy Comic Reader. Um, good stuff. In 1994, we got some more Asriel, um, Detective Comics, uh, 671. Fun time for uh, Batman fans, getting something new that worked. Joker for you. So we got need that for my run, and I got another one. So um, they're both newsstand. They'll probably go into the doubles. Awesome. Are they newsstand? Yeah. My eyes are going crazy. I'll tell you, man, my eyesight is improving, right? <laughs> okay, 1986, Comico Comics, uh, it's Robo. Robotech, the new generation, number 10. I grew up on Robotech. I really want to rewatch it someday. I think it was a breakthrough um, for animation, at least for me. Um, so when I see this, I don't know how good the comics were, but they fall under the banner of indies from the 80s. So I see this for 50 cents. Yep, you know what I'm doing. I'll collect it. I'll collect Robotech. Yep. 1984, Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider-Man. 114. That's probably not, that's not 84. It's got to be like 87 or something. Nope, that's 86. I always loved that cover. New stand. Um, it's in 86, no big deal. I always loved this. But I think it's as Keith Puller does this uh, perspective it's just I love uh, the colors. I love the perspective. Something really simple, you know? And Spidey's got the black suit on, which later becomes uh, Venom. Which I'm not a huge fan of. I like Venom. I, you know, I don't like them enough to, to uh, buy every, you know, book that comes out every month. Venom and Carnage. I'm really not that into them. <laughs> I like them as a plot device in Spidey stories, I guess. But, uh, yeah. Okay, 1986. By American Mythology. Um, it's Eagle number one. I don't know if this is a reprint. It has the glossy uh, pages inside. It does say 86, but unless they were doing this already in 86. But you could tell it's one of the filthies. I just like this character, Eagle. I want to read more about him. Be cool. Nineteen eighty-five, little Walt Simonson for you. Thor uh, three fifty-eight, Beta Ray Bill hitting a robot, smacking a robot off the, uh, the side there. Um, I didn't read all of Walt Simonson when I was a kid, but I'll probably get back to it. Uh, 
Uh, Beta Ray Bill was a beloved, beloved uh, favorite for a reason. He was uh, a product of alien engineering. He became this this powerful being, and then he got the some of the Odin force because he was worthy. Before that, no one else was worthy, you know. Besides Thor. <laughs> Okay, 1985 by Epic Comics. Got Starstruck, number three. I, a lot of these epics, I'm actually... I think they got overlooked because it was just Marvel trying to, you know, trying to compete with cool indie people. But I think they did get some good creators in there for, for its time. Here's a Starstruck uh, t-shirt for you. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's uh, Michael Kaluta on the arts back in the day, uh, 40 years ago, right? They were telling people, because of the success of Watchmen, I think, <laughs> that uh, comics aren't just for kids. And the people who are already reading comics thought that was a great idea. But I don't think it pulled in a lot of people. It might have. But this looks great to me. So yeah, I got that for 50 cents. Um, here's another spectacular Spider-Man. 1996. Sp spectacular Spider-Man 239. Cool uh, lizard arc. Art by Luke Ross. Very underrated uh, artist, I think. He just kept getting better. I kind of jumped in comics a little bit in the late um, 90s. And I remember Luke Ross really liking uh, what he was doing in Spectacular. Cool, it has a card in it. Pretty cool. High grade, Manny. Manny, the Hobgoblin Collector. <laughs> He's got more spectacular Spider-Mans than I do, especially in high grade. But I one time remarked to him, I said, who's going to get them all first, you or me? And I think it was him. 1979, Marvel 2 and 1, 56. We got Thundra. I, like, I love how all these stories in Marvel 2 and 1, uh, flew, they... Uh, flowed together. It was just different uh, character appearances within certain issues, you know? Wow. So we've got some Perez, George Perez, and uh, Gene Day doing the um, inks, I think. Or breakdowns or something. Very, very cool. It's... Sometimes the comics were looking uh, nicer inside, you know? But they were on a tight schedule. They were cranking this stuff out. Okay, 1993 by Epic, The Heavy Hitters, The Trouble with Girls. I did find, I got another one of these in the Filthy 50 Centers. I got this one from uh, Rob, Cheap Comic Collector, for two bucks. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool colors. Give me my give me my indies from the 80s or even the early 90s I like. You know. But yeah. It's the trouble with girls. <laughs> I like that. Okay, uh the year 2000, Fantastic Four, 551. They renumbered at this time. Uh, they already did volume two and three, or this might be three, I don't know, but yeah, got it for the Doom, Dr. Doom, uh, cover. Don't know how, I don't know anything about this era of Fantastic Four, but the art looks all right.
Got some Doom looking okay. Dr. Doom, give me a, a long box of Dr. Doom. I'll be happy. 1989, Elementals, number 10, volume 2, Filthy 50 Center by Comico. That looks interesting to me. Surprisingly, it's not a gatefold. But uh, it's probably a double. There was a time I was just buying these. I stopped buying them out of the Filthy 50 Center um, you know, place where I go in Olympia. Called Half Price Books Outlet Store, right? All their comics are 50 cents there. I think all the other uh, Half Price Books, if they don't sell, like, it goes to that outlet store. Okay, 1993. Spectacular Spider-Man 2020. Four, Tombstone is actually a cool character, and he was actually first presented in this series, I do believe. So um, I know people go for first appearances. I'm not saying this is it, but it's during this era. Some cool Sal Buscema art. So when I tell you about like Sal Buscema and his mouths and people, that's what you get right there. <laughs> sometimes, uh, sometimes other artists do that mouth and I think it's Sal Buscema and it's not. Okay, 1991, Justice League Europe, 26. I, I'm slowly getting this. Pretty cool uh, Bart Sears cover. I haven't read Justice League Europe yet. I read, I'm read. i reading the international that leads into this. But for 50 cents without the stamp, without the 50 cent stamp, I'm like, yeah, dude. I got a bunch of Justice League in high grade with that filthy 50 center stamp on it. Um, but it is what it is. That looks cool. Okay, 1994. Spe Spectacular Spider-Man 222. You got um, Bill Sienkiewicz. This might be his uh, um, cover. Or it might just simply be Sal Buscema with uh, Bill, Ill Bill doing the finishes, which I love this uh, style. I've, I've said this in other halls. I think Ill Bill did the uh, cover. But yeah, it's, it's got this weird cartoony vibe to it, but it's darkened up by Bill Sienkiewicz, and you know it. You know it's good. It's probably a double, but, I, you know, it's, it's newsstand. Hello. 1984. I will be relentless about John Sable Freelance. Number nine, Mike Grill. I might have that, might be double. Like I said, I got a bunch of these, man, a lot. We got Star Slayer. I got the number one a little while back. We'll be reading that too. You know the splash page is gonna be the next one, right? No, it's not. Maybe this is the splash. No. There it is. <laughs> you guys got to have Mike Grills back. No matter who you are in the comic book uh, industry. Just get his stuff. Clear it out of the shelves. Tell everyone. <laughs> 1992. Elementals 23, trying to clear out the Elementals in the back-to-back -back issue area. I'll show you the gatefold. I guess, you know, someone brought to my attention, yeah, most um, of those indies was doing the gatefold, but I still like it. I think it's cool. They were doing whatever they could to, uh, you know, to compete, right? Uh, 
I like the elementals. I like their main villain, the sorcerer, who disrupted the nat natural order of things, hence the uh, creation of the elementals from uh, recently deceased people. Pretty cool. Okay, uh, 1985. Peter Parker, the spectacular Spider-Man, uh, 113. I've always loved this. Um, this cover as a kid, you know, just Spidey coming in, doing what Spidey does, you know, breaking up crime and stuff. I think this is Rick Leonardi art. I could be wrong, you guys. Almost looks like McFarlane art, early McFarlane art, but um, it's not. Rick Leonardi is another uh, underrated artist, but yeah, Spidey in the black suit. This might be uh, after uh, Web of Spider-Man number one. So it's, it's just the threads, you know? Okay, 1973, The Demon, number 10. Shout out to uh, Danger Room again. I see Jack Kirby affordably. I do pay up for it. I'm not strictly a dollar bin diver. <laughs> I'm mostly that, but uh, come on, you guys. Written, drawn, edited, everything by Jack the Great Kirby. And you could still find his stuff surprisingly uh, very easily in uh, LCSs and stuff at an affordable rate. I love this. I love, I love, uh, look at that. I don't know about the, the thing that screams, but <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> look at the soul snatcher. That's pretty cool too. Love it, man. I love this dark stuff, but you know, presented subtly. Love the inks, love all that stuff. Okay. That's it. You guys. Please click in the description below. You want to trade with me? Check out other uh, comic book channels I love. And yeah, I'll uh, hopefully see you live Wednesday on my show. And I'll see you on the next one.